All right, so welcome everybody. This is the welcoming for the new interns of June 2022 for Cartosa. Um, this is Tim speaking and um, you'll get to know me and uh, the rest of the team around the table um, pretty well over the next few months. So um, if we can just do a quick round of one minute introductions. Um, everybody just say who you are and where you're from and um, we'll start with Amy and Charlie. So um, you guys could just introduce yourselves. Um, hi everybody, I put my camera on so you can see that I'm a real human. Um, hi, I'm Amy. Um, most of the interns already know me. I um, help the interns generally in the first week and from there. <laughs> um, I work at Cartosa as a junior GIS technician, general chameleon who does cool marketing stuff as well. Um, best job ever. Um, and yeah, it's great to meet you all. Right. Um, <laughs> um, Charlie, um, my webcam is not working at the moment, but it doesn't matter because I'm Batman, so um, <laughs> you, you'll probably see me around from time to time. I'm a senior GIS specialist by title at Cartosa, but generally I'm just kind of a fountain of knowledge, uh, nerdy. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a geo nerd um, who will try and like impart whatever knowledge I can to you. That helps. Uh, Tim and I are, are, are bent on world domination, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, we'll, we'll help you on your way to the traffic goals and so on. So if you have any like technical questions or whatever, you'll probably see me um, popping up and trying to offer advice and so on. Great, and then uh, let's introduce the current intern or the, the let's say old interns and in air quotes. So maybe uh, Jeremy, um, you jump in first. Um, hi everyone. Um, like Charlie, I also, my camera is currently manually disabled. I actually disconnected when I'm not using it. Um, I'm Jeremy. I'm an intern. I started in April. Yeah. Um, so I've been here a couple of months. Um, I'm just a yeah, general intern. Great experience. Thanks, Jeremy. Um, and then Mshlanga. Uh, yeah. Hi. Hi, everyone. I'm Mshlanga. I'm also an intern at Katoza. It's been a quite a roller coaster. Thank you. <laughs> and then um, Brighton. Hi everyone, I am Brighton. Brighton Gugles Lagama. I am an intern here. Uh, it's, it's really wonderful to be uh, to learn a lot of things and actually to explore a lot as far as GIS is concerned. Great, and then uh, for the new interns, maybe we can just go around the circle, maybe Eli. All right, hi everyone. Uh, I hope you can hear me. Uh, yep. I'm Eli uh, from Kruger's Door, new intern, started a couple of days ago. Uh, very excited to be here. Uh, thank you for the great opportunity and learning so much. Thanks. Great, it's great to have you here, Eli. Um, and then, Mushalin, how do I say your name properly? You actually pronounce it correct. Oh, yay. <laughs> well done. <laughs> um, Mushalin, I'm from Cape Town, but I'm currently in Johannesburg. Um, I'm doing an MSc in GIS and remote sensing at Wits University. Awesome. Okay, that's great. Um, and do we have anybody else in the room? Aren't we expecting two other people That's, in? That is everyone. We're still Sorry. expecting Christine and Nondi Piwe. Um, they will join when they can. Okay. Um, cool. I'm going to dive right in. We, I, I thought we'd just do a, a little like icebreaker thing. We're going to make a speed map. I know, like Eli, you're still just even discovering what QGIS is, but just do the best to the best of your abilities. Um, we're going to take like. 10 minutes to actually just draw a map of your home or um, where you live or somewhere around that you know very well. You literally have 10 minutes, so it's now 11.06, so uh, 11, uh, what is it, <laughs> 16, <laughs> uh, big math sum that one. Uh, you, you've got to post your picture on Slack and start from zero, just don't, don't use an existing map if you have it already. And, um, Cartosians, if you can participate as well, it'd be great. So here we go, off you go. Um, I'll, I'll share my screen while I'm working. You guys can share your screen if you've got something, if you're doing something interesting. And uh, we 
You're just gonna dive in and Can go. You use a, a base map for reference. Do whatever you like. It's ten minutes. There's no time to even ask questions. <laughs> okay, cool. Go for it. <laughs> okay. I know some of the brand new interns, um, you don't even probably know where to get data from. So OSM yeah. might be your best bet. So just do whatever you can with whatever skills mm -hmm. you have right now, because that's part of the thing is we can see where you are in your journey already. Ten minutes to make a map is stressful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. More so when your cue just hangs. Oh no, <laughs> Jeremy. <laughs> Ongoing problem in our lives. some very funny things here because I don't even have anything on my screen. Oh, open street map. Thank goodness for presets. I must actually talk to them and ask for different presets. I think it might be quite cool to have like an environmental one where you have like, you know, wetlands and rivers and stuff all in a, in a preset. Yeah. Countdown timer. How much time has elapsed? Uh, you got seven minutes left. Seven minutes. Seven minutes. Oh my goodness! I better get into styling something quickly. <laughs> Get ready for some of the worst digitization you've ever seen mm. in your life. Yeah, let me be the first to say that I am completely lost. Don't don't stress. It's just uh, it's just a fun exercise. So if you can't even get a dot on the map done, that's also fine. Then we get to exactly see where you are with your skills. So journey. Yeah. I was trying the OSM 
Uh, but I seem to have to hit the snag with that as well. Just do get whatever you can on onto the map <laughs> in the time you have, and if you can't um, get anything, then it's also quite okay. I do need a four here. Okay, th uh, four minutes left. Cool. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, come on, we got this. Whose idea was this? Mine. Table, attribute table. There we go. Oh, we're supposed to make a full layout as well, not just oh, map, whatever like... you want. You got just whatever you can fit in the time you've got. <laughs> you just do. Complaints. <laughs> I'm going to spend my last two minutes choosing a font, <laughs> which is probably easy. Could spend the whole 15 minutes just um, font selection stage of the thing. Finish, put your picture into Slack or whatever you've created. Okay. Two minutes left. Superpower bonuses, like, can I ask for extra time? No. <laughs> <laughs> We should see maps starting to arrive in Slack. Your map must be in Slack by the end of the 15 minutes, not um, added at the, after the end of the 15 minutes. Ah, oh, it's rendering. Yay, rendered. Okay, stick it in Slack. Okay, time's up. Bop, 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 bop. Okay, stop your, put down your pencils, grab a screenshot of whatever you've got and stick it into Slack. Ah, uh, cool. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Okay, so you put some of the. Mine's um, completely the practical. I'm here. currently building a website that people need to know where to go. Uploading. 
Oh, that's my one. <laughs> my name is my name is it there? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Ooh, Tully, where is this? Mine this is, is really bad. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's have a. Hopefully, yours are all coming in. Let's have a quick uh, review of everything. I mean, you can look, watch them on Slack later, but just for the recording, I'll pull each one up here. Oh, where's the <laughs> wedding? <laughs> next year. Next okay, year. that's exciting. <laughs> yeah. Micheline. That is really bad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Did I know? Oh, I thought I sent the whole one. Oh, I uh, didn't think. You sent again if you like. Screenshot. Okay. Yeah. Well done, Brighton. You got something together very quickly there as well. Well done, Jeremy. Let's see what you made. Cool. Ooh. I like the Jerry, starburst Jerry full of using buildings. Styles that he's, he's got hidden that he bought before. I don't have them hidden, I just know how to do them from that tourism map. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> Muscle memory, <laughs> one time. Checking. Awesome job, Eli. That's great. I was not expecting you to get that much done since you only used QGIS the first time yesterday, didn't you? Or, or this week. Um, okay, cool. And um, who did we miss? Um, Oh, Micheline setting uh, version 2. Okay. Ooh, yeah. fancy. Awesome <laughs> job, guys. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. So... On the road. She's just down the road from you. Yo, well, my maps was green, so I thought I was just down the road. Okay, cool. Oh. Cool, cool. And I'm just in North Cliff. We need to meet for a coffee, guys. Yeah, you what should do definitely do, meet eh? up there. I don't even know much before you. Yeah. No, okay, good. I'm gonna um, uh, uh, move on to the next thing because I've only got an hour. I've got a, I've got my Portuguese lesson starting after this, so I want to make sure that we cover everything. But that was awesome fun, and uh, hopefully you guys um, uh, enjoyed that. And and I would like to maybe encourage you to do that same kind of thing yourself, like on your own as you're working in your career. Like try to just ha take 15 minutes out every now and again, just stick stuff on a map and see what you can achieve. And uh, you know you can use it as a way to hone your skills and. Um, Maybe at the end of the internship, you will make the same thing again, and we can see like how you've progressed. <laughs> um, you can already see if you look at um, what Jeremy and Brighton and um, um, Shango are making. They, you know, they already have got a whole bunch of other skills. Um, so that's great. So I want to spend just this, uh, the rest of this hour, just talking about your internship uh, journey with us and. Um, uh, when I say us, it would be mainly myself, Amy, and Charlie that will be sort of mentoring you. But depending on what you're trying to do, you might have, I might pull other people in to help you. Um, I um, I guess you kind of have read a bit about Cartosa. I don't know how much you know about our company. I won't give you the long version now, but basically we are an open source company. And we have got this kind of very open ethos in the company. Um, by open, we mean like <laughs> we don't have a big hierarchy. We, we don't have a lot of bureaucracy. Um, we would like to do all our work in the open as much as we can. And we use open source in doing that work and um, just like to share everything. Um, a, a big part of what we're doing as a company is not just here to make money, but we're also here to make things that the world can use and that it can improve the world. So um, we want you to, like in this journey with us on your internship, kind of discover and embrace these uh, kind of ideas um, and see how they can positively impact your own lives. Um, so there are a couple of things um, that I brain dumped here and Charlie and Amy can add more um, to this little page. Um, hopefully you can see my screen on the screen share. Um, the, one, the first one is that we work in the open. That means that uh, we don't want you to go off and hide away for three months, build something and then pull it like a, a bunny out of a magician's hat at the end and say, ta-da, here's my work. Um, and, uh, you know, like everything that you did in the process of making that thing was hidden away. We want the whole process to be open. Um, and generally, that's how we do our production work for our clients as well. We put them in an open repository somewhere. Everything's out there that they can come and look at it if they want to. Um, and we want you to work in that same way. So um, really just embrace this idea at the start that you're going to be working in a very open way. We want to see the, the broken, damaged, unready bits just as much as we want to see the finished things. And one of the reasons for doing that, 
uh, there are many reasons for doing that, but one of the main reasons for, from your point of view is that we can give you course corrections very early on in the process so that you don't waste time and effort doing stuff um, that needs to be redone again at the end of the process because we've been able to see early on in the process, oh, you're going down the wrong path there, or maybe if I just give you this one tip, it will accelerate your work a lot. So, um, so working in the open means checking in continuously. So you'll see we have a daily stand-up system in the intern channel. Every day you should tell us three things. Uh, existing interns, do you know? <laughs> do you know what those three things are? Right. What I did yesterday, what like what I accomplished yesterday, what I'm going to do, and like kind of what, if I have any problems. Exactly. Right. So what did I accomplish yesterday? Um, and then what I plan to do today. Oh. And what's blocking my way? So those are the three like little gems of information that we look for from you every every day. Um, and knowing those three things, we can kind of like uh, uh, like I said, course correct you quickly if you're going wrong. Um, we can uh, if you if you're getting stuck on something, we can jump in and help you if we need to. Um, it just gives us so much more ability to to like benefit you yeah. um, anything of those three things doesn't make sense then just let us know um, maybe just to comment on that kind of feedback loop as well um, is that when people give you course corrections or feedback on your work it's not coming with judgment so often like people don't want to be transparent about the way they work and so on because they are, mm -hmm. I don't know, fear of failure, worrying about judgments and so on. Um, I think Kotos is like, you know, part of the culture and the ethos and everything is like, we are all human, we all make mistakes. Um, and when we give you a correction, it's not coming with judgment and we're not um, critiquing your character. We're just saying maybe there's a better way to do this or, you know, maybe you misinterpreted. Uh, you know, it could be a fault of one of us, like we didn't explain the requirement well enough or something, you know, um, and we want to clarify. So, you know, just be aware that like, this process is iterative and it is more efficient, um, but it doesn't come with judgment or, or some sort of yeah. like, strings attached. 100% agreed. Yeah, it's like we, we, we're here to see you succeed. So there's no benefit for us in running you down or <laughs> making belittling you. We just want to see you just do awesome stuff and uh, help you do that. I can't make my one <laughs> succeed anyway. I, that's blocking me, so I'm just going to move on. Yeah, you've got a you've got a, um, a line to top button there just above where it is. Yeah, it should be aligning in the center though. Oh, this above one. center? Yeah, that one. There you go. Tom. No, you're yeah, even further down. Yeah. Uh, it's just not there. Yeah. Anyway, it doesn't matter. That's, that's fine. Okay, See, everyone makes mistakes. <laughs> Okay, so that's the ethos, yeah? And there's many more pieces of that. I mean, uh, again, uh, it's nice to have an overlap with Jeremy and Brighton and um, Mich Michelangelo here that they can try to imbue some of that ethos into you guys as well because they have had a lot of, um, let's say, drumming in of these things uh, to them and they really, uh, I hope you're seeing the benefits of it but also getting like in the swing of this kind of workflow. And it takes a while if you come from a different environment where you're not asked to do these things, it takes a while to get your brain into that mode. So uh, we want to tell you right at the beginning that this is what we're expecting from you so that you kind of already set on that track um, as you start. Okay. Um, so we work in the open. The other thing is we work collaboratively. So um, we, even if we assign you individual tasks, we welcome you asking each other for help and advice. I mean, maybe not actually doing the task because that's like to uh, achieving your task by proxy and maybe it could be seen as innovative <laughs> or um, using your initiative. But generally we want to be able to see that you can do things, but when you, when you need help or when you even want to just bounce off your work of others, we want you to like collaborate. So it's not just me, Charlie and Amy should be giving you input on your work, like if we post your map on, on the Slack channel or what have you, it should be everybody saying, oh, I can see there's a little mistake because everybody sees things that other people don't see. Okay. Um, and then, um, like the process you should be following is like creating, 
Um, so like building, you say we ask, give you a task, like you've got your Africa map or something, you, you build it, and then you iterate, which means that you continuously improving until you get it as perfect as you can within the time span that you have available to work on the thing. And then annotate is a very, very important thing that we want you to keep a, like a lab book. Uh, at the end of this internship, you should have um, a folder full of notes of all the different tasks you did, all the special things that you needed to, to remember, um, basically like a cheat sheet that you followed or all the little tips that you got. Those things that you annotate can become products in themselves. They can become value that you can share to other people. Um, and we'll see just now, we're gonna, we, we've got actually a platform for doing that. But even whatever doesn't go into our platform, you should have your own um, place where you record everything that you do, whether it's an expression that you write in QGIS or um, just the names or the fonts that you use, whatever. You, you need to annotate your work so that you're able to repeat it again later. Okay. Anything to add on that, Amy and Charlie? No, I think that sums it up. Not yeah, anything. absolutely. Okay. So I'll keep it simple and move on to the next thing. So the goals for your internship, right? And again, we can just brain dump here. You might have your own goals and I welcome you to tell us your goals. We can add them to the board here. But from my side, like what I want to do is help you prepare for the workplace. So if you've, if you've done your master's degree or you even like Eli, I don't think you have a background in GIS, but you, you want to get into this business, then we want to help you be able to participate in the workforce of, a, of the geospatial um, you know, industry and, um, and especially be able to participate with all the open source tools because they are huge enabling uh, mm -hmm. factors that allow you to just start your own business or go to any company and there's no cost to licensing or bureaucracy. Often it's not even only the cost but also the bureaucracy of trying to procure licenses and hardware and things. So we want to help you prepare for the workplace using all these cool tools that we know about. Yeah. Um, the second thing we want to do is help you develop a portfolio of work. If you've just left university or you're trying to get work in the geospatial um, industry, um, you're going to prepare a CV, which is part of your, you know, like um, standard rite of passage, let's say, to, to getting um, into a new job. But if people send us CVs and there's no portfolio of work, it seriously hampers their ability to get a job with us because we have no idea what you're able to achieve. So we want you to build like a, a collection of maps and other geospatial products, analysis results, could be code if you're a coder or what have you, um, that you can attach to your CV and show the world and say, look, this is what I can make. And that will s seriously help you get into the workplace. Okay, and I spelled this wrong. So um, then the next thing we want to do is uh, uh, references. We want to get uh, you references. That means basically when you leave, uh, so somebody calls us and says, hey, do you remember this intern that worked uh, with you? Or can you recommend them? We want to be able to say yes, and we want to be able to provide you with um, like one more uh, like um, uh, tick mark next to your name when somebody's thinking about hiring you. Okay, um, so that means you do need to impress us because obviously if you do a, if you if you're not like working hard in your internship and trying to like do the best you can, it's going to be hard for us to. Give you a good reference right and, and we will be honest if people you know phone us and ask you we're not going to just automatically give you a glowing review so you need to work hard and impress us um, and then the next thing is we want you to learn about open source gis so we put the open source in there because we don't we're not going to be covering esri products or any of the sort of like commercial gis products um, everything that we show you is going to be done using open source tools and so on so um, like at the end of this process you should have enough knowledge that you can use QGIS, Postgres um, and various other tools um, to, to build uh, and solve geospatial problems. Okay. And then we want you to develop your skills. So um, developing your skills means that you may already have theoretical experience, Micheline, if you've been doing your masters, what have you, um, and you probably did some practical things in there. But we want to try to take you to the next level so that you can actually identify which things you're good at, 
identify which things you're not so good at and build on those like you know get better at the things you're good at but also get good at the things you're not so good at or whatever you um uh, and then this last one here is to contribute to the body of knowledge so as i've explained we're, we're an open company and we try to build things that will make the world better as well as solve our clients needs and and part of that is contributing outside of like our, our company it's not just like uh, we, we get our own like secret stash of information and knowledge that we're going to keep tightly to our chest and use that to extract as much money as we can from the world. No, we want to we want to build an, a, a whole bunch of knowledge that we can put out there that everybody else who's tr struggling with the same problems can say, solve those problems, starting at the next level, starting at where you left off in your knowledge journey. Okay, and that way that's the only way to like create like um, catalytic, catalytic change in the world, right? And um, that everybody has, doesn't have to start from scratch um, every time they're trying to solve problems. So um, I will do a separate session, maybe I'll, I'll volunteer you, Charlie, to do a separate session on just specifically the Cartosa Handbook, which is a project um, we started uh, a couple of months back. It's basically kind of empty at the moment. And we're going to be asking you to contribute actively to that throughout your internship um, you'll see especially like if we're doing cartography or other things we we'll give you a lot of critique and tips and so on and each one of those little ideas that we give you is something that could actually go into this um, cartoza handbook and uh, uh, it, contributing to the body of knowledge will also help you to understand how to organize information how to organize your thoughts and how to you know just um, create a knowledge product um, end of your work um, maybe we can hear from you quickly if you had any goals that are not on my table here or my diagram here that you think we should have here or Charlie or Amy if I've left something off that you think I should have added make lots of money <laughs> <laughs> everybody thought <laughs> yeah that's not one of my goals at all and I'm not going to put it on there because it's really not what the internships for or I mean we all want to make a living but I mean the, making a living should be a natural outcome of being passionate and good at your your craft rather than a direct goal in my opinion so yeah, yeah. Um, I think an important one for me when I was interning way back when um, was to like network and meet people mm. in the um, GIS world um, because, you know, when you come out of varsity, you don't have any contacts. You don't know, you know, what's going on, who does stuff. If you're stuck, I mean, people, you know, can, can help you. I know, you know, if there's anything hydrogeology based, I can go to Hans and be like, hi, you're a genius at this. Can you help me out? So for me, a lot of, you know, what was great about the internship was making contacts, networking, and just getting to know everybody in the GIS world. I, I think adjacent to that is probably building up like your profile in the open source kind of community, mm -hmm. because with open source, basically you're asking other people, like if you have a bug in open source, no one's paying the, the maintainers or uh, contributors to go and fix it. So you can actually rely on social credit. So for example, if I go ask a developer, a QGIS, could you fix this bug, you know, I'm not doing the development because I work on change logging community stuff. You know, I, I have that kind of social standing with them that they might decide to fix my bug instead of someone else's, or even like a bug that someone else is paying them to do. They'd rather, you know, um, do that. So you do d develop some sort of social credit with the broader international community in the open source world. Yeah, hundred percent. And I think maybe just participating in the community is maybe another one we could add. Yeah, just understanding how the community works and. One of the things that, that, that sort of is implicit in being an open source is that you're part of the people that make the things, not just part of the people that consume the things, right? I mean, or you're part of the community that makes the things, not just the ones that consume it. So um, you can interact. Like if you if you want to talk to an Esri developer, I don't know, good luck to you. I don't know, they're probably <laughs> hidden away in a basement somewhere. Nobody ever gets to talk to them. If you want to talk to a developer of Postgres or QGIS or whatever you... You can just walk up to them and, and ask them stuff or walk up to a chat room or a mailing list where they're present and, you know, politely and... and you have to go through three sales channels and six <laughs> support staff. <Yeah. laughs> 
Okay, so now we've restored the symmetry of my diagram. I was a bit worried when Amy added one and it couldn't uh, make a pyramid anymore, but now uh, harmony is restored ish. Let me see. I think I need a layout and grid. The alignment that's giving you headaches now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Arrange, distribute, uh, snap to grid. Oh, that's nice. There we go. Okay. Cool. Anything to add from the existing interns or the new interns? Um, I'm not so sure how to how to like uh, explain this, but like uh, it also helps uh, to define uh, your your dot uh, in the open source world. Like, uh, where do I really focus on? Because it's more like uh, when you like at work and you learn a lot of things, and then you can see uh, which side can I go and uh, what really can I help to contribute to the knowledge, like um, something like that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, that's a great suggestion. Yeah, because maybe not everybody's going to be a cartographer, right? I mean, we're going to we're going to make you all do a whole bunch of stuff. Some of which will be uh, like out of your comfort zone, um, but some of you might want to be more um, analysts. Might so maybe you work with better with teaching and and knowledge sharing. Some of you might want to be all rounders and do all sorts of things. Um, you know, so understanding where where you want to be working, what kind of things you want to be doing, is a very useful um, outcome. All right. Um, I wanted to jump over to um, just some housekeeping things on the essential software. And I, I'm going to just brain dump again with Charlie and Amy's help here. But things that you should have on your computer, ba uh, basically, and that um, that uh, you should be using as part of you know as a day-to-day -day basis. Um, um, So um, maybe Charlie, you can talk to them as I add them. Then I you know, don't have to multitask. Okay. So, much. <laughs> right. so, so Q Q just would be the, of course, the world premier open source <laughs> TIS, um, and Post just and PostgreSQL for anyone unfamiliar is a PostgreSQL is a, a relational database management system which we use to store and query and retrieve data. Um, and PostGIS is an extension for that, which provides us with spatial functionality. So QGIS uh, works very well with PostGIS and PostgreSQL. Um, so you can store all of your spatial data information in there. You can analyze it, retrieve it, and so on. And we will use that quite extensively for our projects. Synfig is a animation studio. So um, Tim is working uh, with you know, in integrating the, the modern kind of concept of multimedia and interactive web. Uh, it includes a lot of animation. In terms of working uh, also with like, you know, the, the core developers of QGIS and um, on, on his own mission <laughs> to add animation to um, QGIS. So we, we have been asking interns to produce things like animated icons so you can make maps mm -hmm. that like work like video and so on. Um, Inkscape is a vector graphics software suite which is also open source. It's kind of like QGIS but for vector graphics. So vector graphics are, you know, raster graphics are like standard JPEGs that you might be familiar with, which have pixels, and then vector graphics are mathematically defined. So, you know, they don't have pixels. You can scale them up and down without losing any resolution. Um, and we use that quite extensively to produce things like standard vector graphics or SVGs, which can be mm -hmm. used across different devices without like resolution problems and so on. So SVGs are common, and Inkscape is used for producing those. Diagrams.net is the application that Tim is working with at the moment, which is this kind of flowchart software. So we use that to, I don't know who, who uses it all that much. I, I, I know I use it a lot, <laughs> pretty mm, much the same you. level of Tim. <laughs> but, if you, um, if you work with Tim, you use it a lot. I've got a yeah, yeah. really so, messy diagram. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it, it's, a, it's nice for mental modeling, right? So you kind of like stick all these things together and you see how they relate to each other and you, you do data capture it. And it, you, 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 you can kind of express your ideas more clearly with these kind of diagrams and just, I know a lot of people like to keep their, um, the, the kind of notes just in a text file or something, but then like sharing it with other people can become a challenge, right? Um, right, onto sync thing. So basically, I don't know, I'm sure all the people are upstanding and don't know what torrents are, <laughs> but 
but um, basically BitTorrent is a, 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 a network protocol essentially, which works between uh, devices on a peer-to-peer -peer network. So you don't need a client and a server and so on. You can you know, have your, your device sitting behind a network somewhere um, and chat, uh, chat, like I can talk to Amy's computer on her network, you know, without having like a network server or connecting in any other way through this peer-to-peer -peer protocol. And SyncThing is an application that leverages that to share data. So basically what you might use Google Drive or Dropbox and so on for sharing information between computers and so on, that will use a server. So we, we have, I think, Nextcloud for doing that. Um, but sync thing is, is kind of our go-to, especially because spatial data is very large and storing it on the server gets very expensive. We can just share assets between each other with sync thing. And then as you update and, and um, like if you update your QGIS project, it'll automatically um, make best effort to synchronize with someone like my computer or Tim's computer. And we can quite easily review what you have been doing and, and mm -hmm. check on those updates very easily. Um, GitHub mm -hmm. is a platform for storing and managing code projects so it's, it's for source code git is the kind of underlying technology that powers the way that most modern development companies manage their version control um, and github is a platform that leverages git to make it very easy for us to track changes uh, maintain distributed version control in a way that doesn't cause issues with like your production code. So for example, as an intern, you might pr produce um, some code that you know isn't up to scratch and could break things. And we need to be able to review that and then incorporate the changes we want into the main code base without breaking anything. So GitHub is, is kind of our go-to for that. Um, similar platform you might be familiar with is like GitLab, which is open source and self-hosted or um, Bitbucket and so on. GitHub we use um, largely because most commercial companies would use it for their pr proprietary projects and then they have to pay for it um, because 90% of what we make is open source, uh, you know, or 99% really. Uh, we, we use Git, GitHub um, directly um, without having to worry about that so much. Visual Studio Code is an integrated development environment. So that's like a text editor essentially, but for code. Um, Visual Studio Code is an open source project uh, spearheaded by Microsoft, um, and that's kind of our standard for like um, producing code, markdown documents, and so on. Uh, it, it integrates very well with version control and GitHub and everything. So uh, learning to use that will be to your advantage, and it is kind of like the de facto standard as far as I'm aware in the industry. So a very good. Uh, it's useful to, to have skills in that. Um, Google Meet, of course, like our, our default meeting software. Um, I'm sure you know how to use it, seeing as you're in a Google meeting room right now. <laughs> um, and yeah, then Tim's giving us some recommended hardware on, um, you know, what you would need to run all of the software effectively without like having to watch loading bars all day. Um, and this is probably I mean, the bare minimum, them, you know, like it yeah. works better. But, yeah. So of course you need like um, you know, a headset or, or a headphones. Uh, if you're in meetings in a remote setting or remote companies, uh, you know, having just a speaker on with the microphone can cause echoes and so on. So it's much better to get like a headset with microphone. Um, 250 gigs of free space, that's kind of like just dedicated to the work that you'll be doing, right? So like spatial data can get quite large and you need that kind of space available. And remember as well that you've got all these other assets for making your maps, like uh, custom fonts, uh, you know, icon libraries uh, and collections and so on. Um, eight gigs of RAM, I mean, more is better, but <laughs> you know, if, you, if you're working with less than that, it could be very challenging, especially if you're trying to run the database and like Postgres and QGIS on the same system. Um, and then dual screens are very, very useful when you're working with spatial data because, and databases in general, because we, we typically work with, um, you know, a, a collection of data and attributes and so on, and then the geometries as well in the map. Um, and having that extra real estate really, really helps, especially if you're, you've got like Slack or something open on another screen so that you can monitor your communications and, and so on. Um, and yeah, I think that's basically it for like hardware. Um, Just a quick addition from Amy for the software is OBS as well. Um, okay, yeah. Again, you messed up my synergy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Amy's, Amy's adding more. <laughs> it's okay. I, um, I just thought also peak 
or some kind of oh, yes, yes. Good, software good, good. is probably yeah. great because Thank that's you. easy for us if you have a proper issue and you make a quick gif, send it on Slack and then we can be like, oh, this is a thing and we can respond because sometimes it's easier. I know I've been speaking to Brighton in gifs. It's sometimes just easier to show someone than explain how to do it. Yeah. And you have to pronounce it gif because gif is just a lie. <laughs> when okay. you join the company, we make sure so you can Maybe you can run through that whole column there, Charlie, because I just added another column. Great. It's also regex, not regex. I make the rules. <laughs> <laughs> right. So OBS is Open Broadcaster Studio. It's an open source application that a lot of like video gamers use for streaming and Twitch and so on. Um, but it's very useful for us. Like when we have these sessions, for example, Tim should be recording this session on his computer with OBS so that we can publish to YouTube and again, like share that body of knowledge. We want people to be able to, like we, we don't want to repeat ourselves if we can avoid it. <laughs> we really want to be able to record these sessions and make them available for other people to go and mm -hmm. view um, and so on. And also we can like make compilations and so on. Uh, Peak is kind of how OBS would record your entire system and screen and you can do all these advanced functions. Peak is a much simpler approach. Tim is demonstrating it now. Basically, you just make a little section of your screen that you can take screenshots or uh, make animations. So here you can actually produce a little animation as a GIF file, which is like a, a type of animated uh, image, which are widely supported by most platforms. So things like Slack, you can just send it to someone and show them what, mm. you, what you're doing rather than like making a full video. So it's very useful for um, you know, doing this sort of thing. Um, it's also, I mean, getting comfortable with GIFs and so on, like when you're making things like animated maps and so on, also be very useful. And then the screenshot tool that Tim has referenced there will differ from system to system. So if you're on Windows, I think there's one built in, like, like uh, snip, 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 snip. Yeah, I used snip snip. Can it do annotations? Because yeah. the annotations part is really important, like that you can mark. Yeah. yeah. You can, so with snip, you can draw the annotation, you can't add text. Um, so that. So all those screenshots I've been adding to your tutorials and stuff, and those have to go through Libra off the Libra draw to add like the numbers and stuff. And uh, Snip can't do animations; it can only do static um, boxes. Just to show, like on my system, I can go like this. I can grab a screenshot, then I can like you know put some text here. Yeah, no, you, you if you you can draw with your mouse that, that you get that different part. applications on. Yeah. It doesn't matter which one you use, as long as you can do the different the systems, task, different you know. tools. Uh, the one, yeah, on Windows, I think the keyboard shortcut is Super or Windows button Shift and S, and then you can just do what Tim just did there. Um, you can also use things like Paint.net or GIMP um, or Photoshop or whatever, and like yeah. just some sort of like image manipulation program that you can like add annotations and, and like show mm -hmm. people, like put arrows on, make documentation, highlight things, and so on. I just want to mention because all the software on this list is free, it's open source, you don't have to pay anything for it, you just need the disk space to be able to run it, so there's no cost to getting any of this. Um, you did the hardware, and then just some of these skills, Charlie, you can just run through those maybe as well. We right, okay, so um, version control is very important, we'll start there. Um, I think, Amy, you've, you've got some notes and resources on the, like, the onboarding kind of training thing, which linked to some demo sessions that we've recorded. Uh, also like an article that I've put on the handbook, which explains how version control works. Um, but basically every time you make a change to things, you kind of need to be able to commit the changes and then make it available for like us to review and so on. Um, and sometimes you actually want to, you, you want to keep those changes because, you know, you might want to go back to it later and actually like implement something that you had tried before that didn't really work. Um, so it's very important to like version things and to make sure that you don't uh, make collisions with other people's work, right? So we need to make sure that like, the version you keep, like we all need to keep our, our versions up to date with each other, but we need to be able to track who's making changes to what document. Okay. So version control and versioning is very important, but and, and you of can course use, doing this yeah, you can like, use different modes for doing that. So you might be using Git, but if you like Brighton with your project, you might just save a copy of your QGIS project file and your geo package every night before you go to bed, you know, and have it on a external hard disk or something like just yeah. whatever's appropriate so that you can go back and look at previous versions of your work and rescue things if you made mistakes. In there. Yeah. 
So if you had like a backup system like RESTEC or something that does differential backups, then you probably don't have to worry about it. Otherwise, you might need to just, uh, the, the simplest way of versioning is just, you know, control C, control V, you make a copy of, <laughs> copy of, copy one, copy two, copy three. Um, it, it's not very sophisticated, but I mean, it works. So you need to make sure that you don't lose work. Like redoing work mm -hmm. is just not efficient and not really practical. I, instead of copy one, two, three, I put the date at the end. So six numbers, and then you know exactly when you made it. Yeah. Yep, that's good. Cool. And then uh, Markdown is a kind of syntax for producing like styled text, right? So if you use WhatsApp or Telegram and you press uh, asterisk, asterisk, uh, what's it, or star, star, then the, the word that you want to make bold and then star, star again, when you send it on WhatsApp, it will get bold. Or if you put like underscores in front and behind it, it will become underlined. So Markdown is basically used, it's like a subset of this kind of markup language, which is made much more simple, simple than something like HTML, which is like the language of the web. Um, and web browsers take that HTML and they render it into graphics based on the styles you define, right? So here Tim's showing you on the left, we've got the Markdown and you can see it's heading level three based on those three hashes. Then it says commit messages. Um, and then, you know, you've got your, your sentence or paragraph underneath that. And you can see when you preview it, it gets rendered to like a web page style um, automatically. So this is typically how we produce documentation. It's not efficient to write out HTML all the time. Word processors are just terrible at their one job <laughs> in general. Um, of course, we do still write reports. You had one job. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we, we still use them because like, you know, they're, they're a necessary evil in, in effect. but. Um, Markdown is kind of the language. Honestly, it's like the de, de facto stand standard for uh, documentation mm -hmm. online these days. Let me just, just there add to that, Charlie, that um, one of the reasons Charlie says word processes suck is that they store their the, um, content in a binary file, whereas in a Markdown document, it's stored in a plain text file. And then if you're using a versioning system, you can see the line by line or word by word changes mm -hmm. between two versions of the file, whereas in a Word document, yeah, there are some tools that let you do it, but in, in Git and the other things that we t typically use, they don't really sit well. In, in uh, They're just seen as a whole document change every time something changes. You can't understand the minor, the minor minutia of what actually changed in that document. Also, the integration between so systems. So, like, you have a, a version system that works in Microsoft Word, but then it doesn't work in Lib LibreOffice and so on. If this is just text, it works everywhere. So, uh, very important to learn markdown it, it has a little bit of a learning curve but uh i mean it's it's Not pretty much standard. So. yeah right. it's it's very simple um and it's widely used it is a skill that i imagine if you work in technology anywhere in the world these days you will come across it and use it um there is something else that is also used which is more kind of advanced or flexible which is often used called restructured text but if you're not working in documentation i don't think you have to worry about it but markdown is very important um and then, of course, Slack threads and messaging, uh, you just use a messaging tool. Uh, it supports Markdown, by the way. So <laughs> you can put your Markdown into a Slack message and it should format it for you uh, if you want to learn Markdown. Oh, not. I think you have to Control Shift F, it's in the settings. Control Shift F. Control Shift F. Mm. You haven't got a space there, so now it's, yeah. Control Shift F, see if it formats. Maybe it's just on my version. Ah, yeah, okay. But yes, you can write Markdown somewhere in there. Um, uh, we've only got five minutes left, so um, I, yeah. So maybe we just say yeah, we can leave it there at the Slack. But you need to just be conversant in using Slack, and part of that is not only writing. You know, everyone knows how to write, but actually being present and responsive in the Slack, so that if we're looking for information. We don't want to wait for five days before we iterate. Remember, we had that other bullet about iterating quickly. We won't be able to get rapid feedback to people. We do. Uh, we are working. We have clients and what have you. So we are busy, but we'll try to get back to you as quick as we can. But between yourselves, you should be try to be as responsive as you can, so that you're helping each other. You know? Remember, it's not all up to us. You know, me, Charlie, and Amy to to solve all your problems. It's up to you, to you to help each other as well. All right. Um, I just have the last page here on my slide, uh, deck, and this is in the interns um, sync thing, by the way. Um, and we will give you all access to the intern sync thing, and then you can 
put your own work there and also see the previous work that Brighton and uh, Jeremy and others have done, you know, like, um, so you'll get this access to this um, share. Um, so just a couple of things from our side, like to how to, keep, like how to give us your best. It's like on, on time is late. Like we, we are like have client meetings and a lot of stuff going on a lot of the time. So if we, for example, we have two interns who are not even here, you know, they're basically missing out on something. They're lucky mm. because we're recording things, but often we won't be recording stuff. You just miss out and you just, um, you know, the last to the party gets no cake, you know, <laughs> you know, so if you, um, you know, we, we're not that invested. If you, if you miss things, it's like, it doesn't affect our lives too much. You're not generally doing client work, or whatever. It's yourself that misses out. Yeah. So just try to be on time and be like professional behavior, basically. Like if you can't be at a meeting, send us a note. If you're going to be late, make sure you send on Slack. You know, everyone should have Slack on their phone in their pocket. So they, you know, there shouldn't be a reason why you can't just pop us a note and just tell us what's going on. Things are not working out for you to join a session. <laughs> Um, we want you to be active and engaged, so your voice is just as important as everybody else's in the room. We want to hear you talk, give your ideas, call us out when we're wrong. We're often wrong. It's not. It's definitely not the case that we propose that we are the experts and know everything and you don't know anything. We'll definitely make mistakes and you should call us out and point it out in a nice way and say, oh, isn't it like this, what have you. So make your voice heard. Um, the document your work I already covered, but I just wanted to re-emphasize it again. It's, super important that you create yourself a system ideally you should use markdown there are some nice tools like um uh i'll find the names but that, that you can manage markdown folders what's that one you were touting the other day charlie that does the mind maps and things um, um log c uh, yeah maybe there was another one a commercial one as well with sort of semi-commercial what's it called obsidian obsidian yeah um but there's also there's some other open source ones. We'll put some names of tools in the Slack channel. But just get in the habit right from the beginning of creating a markdown folder and just documenting everything you do and create a knowledge base for yourself. Um, and then find out what you don't know and get to know it. Like one of the things you're going to discover is that there's so much you don't know yet. Um, so part of the learning process is knowing what you don't know, <laughs> and then figuring out how to go and get the skills on those things. So it might be like basic HTML skills or um, how fonts work or um, rules of cartography or whatever. Figure out where your gaps are and then use this time to help us, you know, give you the knowledge where we can or at least go and research it yourself, you know, or let us point you in the right direction of where to find that information. So it's very much up to you to, to set the agenda of the work that you're doing based on your own knowledge or lack of it. Okay. Amy's going to have some themes and tasks through the through the internship and we'll also have some client production work that we'll ask you to work on as well where, wherever we can. We'll give you as much of the sort of like client-based work as we can because that gives you just exposure to actually doing real-world projects which is always more satisfying than making a throwaway thing. Okay. And that's my spiel. I hope I didn't talk too much. I'm going to hand over to Amy. I can see she's gearing up to say something. Mm. Uh, no, <laughs> uh, just your your mic is uh, flashing on and off. As, <laughs> as, uh, that's weird. <laughs> Um, it's just background noise, I suppose. Um, I was going to say that I will obviously take all these diagrams that Tim has put together and put them also on the course platform, so it is all in one place for you. And you know, even the exercises, even if they're not time based. They'll go on our blog. A line of code to add to your um, mm. So nothing is ever wasted. For sure. And all of your work, will, where we can, we'll put it on. We've got a, um, a blog that you can put your information on and your products on. Um, social media. Social media. Tweet it and yeah, go crazy. Facebooking and uh, Instagramming. and uh, Let me really date myself. What was the... Um, my space put it on my space <laughs> okay um i need to wrap up here i need to go to my portuguese lesson i thank you all for joining us and i hope you have a good time um we can carry on the chat further in slack i've recorded the session i'll put it online on youtube if you want to re recap anything and just wish you all the best of luck and we'll talk to you soon Fantastic. thanks everyone thanks everybody
Cheers.